Hello world, welcome back to another TFC CTF 2022 write up video. In this video, we'll be walking through the forensics challenge crash. Let's get into it. Oh no, my computer crashed. Can you help me find out why? Okay, so you got a series of questions you need to answer based on the file they give you, which is this memory.dmp file. Now, under normal circumstances, we would use volatility to analyze the memory dump, but in this case, volatility doesn't work. The tool that I used instead was WinDBG. WinDBG Preview, to be exact, which is Windows kind of own debugger, which can process dump files as long as they're Windows memory dump files, essentially, right? or Windows crash memory dump files. So I already have it open here. So let's go ahead and open up the file. So we know open up the dump file and it's already loaded right here. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. And now what you can do is type in commands in this box right here, or you can select the links from inside the interface right here. So let's just click the command it makes it easier for us anyways. And you'll notice it starts processing all our information for the file. Now, the first question asks, what is the module name? So what we're going to do is just look up here and you'll see that the module name is my fault. Now, they kind of messed up the challenge solution here a little bit. So if you type in my fault, it's not going to submit it as correct because due to the typo or whatever, they actually want the extension after it as well, which isn't proper because the module name doesn't have the extension after it. But again, nobody's perfect. So we'll just submit it with the dot sys afterwards. And that should work. Yep. There we go. And that's the first question down. Our next question is, what is the latest entry on the call stack? Well, we can actually see the call stack down here, which you can view by going to view and stack. And you can also scroll up a little bit to see the last bit of stack right here. Now, the stack follows a last in first out policy where, or LIFO rather, where the last item in is the first item out. So the latest entry on the stack is going to be whatever the last item is, but it's going to be represented by the first item on the stack, right? Because it'll be the first one out. So the item at frame zero would be our latest entry. And so that would be this NT, whatever that says, right? So let's take that, paste it in and submit. All right, what is the process name? I believe we can find that by going up or you could do exclamation mark process in the commands, but I don't think we need to do that because it is right about here. Process name, not my fault, 64.exe. So that'll be our process name for this. All right. What is the bug check name? Now you'll be able to scroll up a little bit from the process name and you'll find that the bug check code rather is D1. Now you could look up what D1 means online, but if you just scroll back up here, you'll find that the bug check name referenced by D1 out here in parentheses is this driver IRQL not less than or equal. So that's going to be our bug check name. So whenever you have a bug check code, you can always scroll up and under the bug check analysis box right underneath the first line will actually tell you what the bug check name for that specific bug check code is. So we'll submit that. What is the value of the IRQL full name? So the IRQL is like the interrupt request level, I believe is what it stands for. And you can see that value right here, but it doesn't tell us what the full name is, right? Because you, if you put two here, that's not going to be correct. What we can do is do exclamation mark IRQL run that. And you'll find the name of it right here. So here you have the value, which is two and the full name would be dispatch level. So we'll paste that in and submit. All right. Final question. What is the SID for the integrity level of the process? So the SID is of course that unique user ID that you often see in the registry or whatever for your user or different objects. Every object has kind of its own SID kind of or GUID rather. And we're looking for the integrity level of the process. So what we can do to start with, and this is the hardest question out of all of these is do exclamation mark process. 
And I found online that you can actually get to the integrity level or well, the SID for the integrity level by simply looking at the token information. So we're going to go ahead and select the token here. And you'll notice that if we scroll up, there's a bunch of SIDs relating to different user groups for this token. Now, that being said, we don't actually have the integrity level of the process listed here, but what we do have is the SID for this group integrity, group integrity enabled value, okay? So that value, that attribute is going to technically be our integrity variable. So that value is technically going to hold our integrity level. Even though we don't know what the integrity level is by this, we do know that this SID relates to the integrity value. Hence why it says group integrity. So if we just copy that SID and paste it here, that should be our answer. Excellent. All right, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. Turn on post notifications to get regular injections of cyber content directly into your feed. Check out our Patreon, join our Discord, and follow us on Twitter. Links in the description box down below. And leave any feedback or questions in the comments section down below. This is Almond Milk. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.